Hello, I'm John Harris. And I'm Ellen Zhao. And we're Square One. Square One unleashes the potential in makers by streamlining the transition from prototype to product. So let's talk about the beginning of Square One. This past winter in entrepreneurship class, myself and two other friends came up with the idea. As engineers who love to tinker, we've been enthralled with the growing maker movement. And so we did some research into the products and companies supporting the maker movement. We looked in kick into Kickstarter specifically. And from our research, we were really surprised to find that nearly 80% of the projects on Kickstarter failed to deliver on time, and 10% failed to deliver at all. A huge problem in the industry, ruining the reputation of the makers and disappointing their backers. The leading issue was challenges with manufacturing. So Square One set out to solve this problem. Our solution was to basically become a direct competitor with Kickstarter. Makers would submit their prototype online. We would analyze the prototype, modify it a little bit, make it manufacturable, manufacture it in-house, sell it on our market, online marketplace, and finally ship it to their customers. An enormous undertaking requiring lots of capital. Even though we thought we could make the product look like this, big square one versus little Kickstarter, reality was far from that, much more like this. We were in need of a pivot. So that's where we came to this spring. This spring, we've been talking to a couple of small businesses, realized some of them had challenges with manufacturing resource management, or resource management. So in collaboration with the computer science class, we developed this online platform to help them keep track of their inventory like the, along those lines. But nearing the end of that, once again, realized that we were no experts in resource management. And we also, there are many competitors out there trying to hold us down. So coming into uh, wildfire this summer, we tried something new. We pitched the idea of connecting makers directly with manufacturers. And our second day, we shared this idea with nearly 40 different entrepreneurs. And although the feedback was generally positive, we were a bit overwhelmed with all the directions we could take it. Why not focus on large industries, they said. You should help the US manufacturers. You should look in the automotive industry. They need help as well. You should look into Quirky, see why they failed, and on and on. At the end of this overwhelming day, we realized that we needed to take a step, step back, almost go back to our roots, go back to square one, understand our makers and what they needed. So from our research, we came up with our ideal customer, Pam. So Pam is an engineer at GE, and in her spare time, she loves to make things. So she goes to her local makerspace. Recent she, recently, she developed this cool new phone case. She showed it to her friends, and they loved it. They asked, where can I get one? And knowing that it's not economical to mass produce via 3D printing at her local makerspace, she knew she needed to find a reliable local manufacturer. However, she had no idea where to start. So this is where Square One comes in. While many makers think they have to look overseas to find manufacturers, they don't realize that they can find small batch manufacturers in their own backyard. So Square One brings back manufacturing to the US by connecting Pam to a network of small batch manufacturers that are US based. In addition, since people like Pam don't have experience sourcing manufacturers, we provide guidance along the way. So from researching Pam and talking to manufacturers, we realized that these manufacturers need us just as much as these makers do. And so this is where we meet Bob. So Bob owns a small batch manufacturing company in Michigan and has about 15 employees. From his local industry, he gets most of his projects and he fills up most of his time. However, there are periods in the year we find his machines are running idle. This is a problem. Bob doesn't have the time nor the resources to look outside of his local network to find more projects, but he would love to fill up this idle time. And again, this is where Square One comes in. So Square One provides reliable projects from outside of Bob's local network and effectively acts as a sales team for them. Thus, we grow Bob's network from a local network to a national network. In addition, we help smooth out their workflow so Bob is constantly working on projects throughout the year and his machines are never running idle. Currently, we're working on our website, squareonemakers.com, to grow a community of makers and allow them to connect with us. In addition, we're beginning our one-on-one -on -one consulting model to connect makers like Pam to manufacturers like Bob. We're initially focusing on injection molding, and from our learnings, we will best learn how, how to address their issues and grow our network. All right, moving forward, we want to partner with the nearly 400 maker spaces in the US, specifically starting with universities, to meet those makers in person. And then on the manufacturing side, we're at the beginning of an exciting collaboration with DMC, the Digital Manufacturing Commons, a not-for-profit developing an online platform to help bring make manufacturers in the US into the 21st century. And we'd love to be the uh, maker-facing side of their platform. In addition to that, we also have some connections with small batch manufacturers. So what we're looking for you guys, if you have any 
makers who want to take it to the next step looking to make their products, we'd love to talk. And if you have any uh, connections with small batch manufacturers, we'd love to hear about them. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'll go first. Yeah, Mert, go first. How do you guys get the idle time of uh, manufacturers? Walk us through that conversation a little bit. How do we get the idle time? Um, yeah. That's one of the big things about our uh, collaboration with DMC. Um, so it's kind of open source platform that's shared with all manufacturers um, that are partnering with them. So we'll be kind of attaining that from them. But as of now, we've mainly gotten that just kind of like word of mouth talking to a couple of different small batch manufacturers. So you guys travel to these places? Uh, we've talked to a few on the phone, and we need to do more. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love this idea. Like, love this idea. We look at a company called Make Time. Have you heard of it? Check yeah. it out. Foundry backed. Very cool. Similar, maybe different, but there's plenty of opportunity. But they started in like Louisville, Kentucky, where there's a bunch of, bunch of small manufacturing, and then they were able to you know match up deals on it. So it, it, the proof is in the pudding, right? You mentioned injection something. Injection yeah, yeah, whatever those are. All right, so um, no, I know nothing about maker stuff, but 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 you got to start somewhere. I think that is the key here. Obviously, is like building up the network, both sides of the marketplace, but figuring out like where's our go to market and what is that type of project, and then proving that you can deliver it on time, on quality, and budget. You know, making that match up when you guys aren't in control really of you know of the of the delivery of it. So um, that was more of a comment. But uh, have you thought about that? I guess how do you get those first few projects going? Um, the first few projects we're really looking on, actually one of our other co-founders, he goes to Ohio State. Um, so we're, he's kind of selling our product to some of the makers out there, even more students. Um, so we're going to focus on students first because um, they're more likely to trust us students mm -hmm. with helping them. I suppose a 30-year-old like, who's been successful working at GE for a while, they're not necessarily going to trust us new guys yet until we get that product. In these, in these conversations, I just I don't fully, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I've never been to many maker spaces, and I don't know how you know how many batches of anything Pam makes. Can you give me a sense of have you talked to find out like what's the balance between what Pam needs to produce and how much downtime these small batch manufacturers have? Is there is there an impact there that that you see? Um, there's definitely an impact. It's something that's kind of moving forward to really like in our initial consulting model, we're gonna kind of force us to really get to know these manufacturers really well. Mm -hmm. um, but we also know that there's these small batch manufacturers out there that only focus on their local industry. All their jobs may be seasonal. So we're going to try to tap into those. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Square One.